Good morning, everyone. Good morning. My name is Tim Cameron. I'm the sheriff of St. Mary's County, and we appreciate the fact that you've come to join us today for a very, very important occasion. It's my pleasure to introduce our presenters this morning, the Secretary of the Maryland State Police, Colonel William Palazzi, the State's Attorney for St. Mary's County, the Honorable Richard Fritz, and the Governor of State of Maryland, the Honorable Larry Hogan. There's a few special partners that I'd like to recognize that are with us here in the audience today. Uh, partners that are uh, very involved in our local e uh, efforts to educate and treat our community on heroin and opiates. Dr. Mina Brewster, the St. Mary's County Health Officer, and Dr. Kathleen O'Brien, the Chief Executive Officer of Walden Sierra Behavioral Health, serving Southern Maryland. I'd also like to acknowledge the very important support of our commissioners of St. Mary's County, uh, the Mayor of Leonardtown, and our Southern Maryland delegation that are with us this morning. Also with us is Clay Stamp, the Executive Director of the Opioid Operational Command Center that we work very, very closely with. I've been a peace officer here in St. Mary's County since 1980 and sheriff since 2006. I never thought that heroin would be the greatest threat to this community. I was appointed by Governor Hogan as the sole law enforcement representative on Maryland's Opioid Emergency Task Force. I heard testimony from six summit locations from all around this state and I heard prosecutors, law enforcement, treatment specialists, and friends, family, and loved ones who were battling addiction within their family or were dealing with the death of a loved one from an overdose. Please understand this, if you have a heroin or opiate addiction, we want you to get help. Everyone here today wants you to get help. We understand this public health emergency and we understand the need for treatment. As a result of very precise investigative work by patrol deputies, troopers, criminal investigators, vice narcotics investigators, and forensic investigators. We treated every deadly overdose case as a, as a homicide, and as a result of that, State's Attorney Richard Fritz secured eight separate indictments on individuals for second degree murder, manslaughter, reckless endangerment, and distribution charges. The St. Mary's County Grand Juries have indicted eight persons for causing the death of eight victims by distribution of illicit drugs specifically heroin, fentanyl, and carfentanyl, or some combination therein. Indicted and subsequently arrested were Mark Stephen Garner, Regina Claggett Brown, Latisse Cantel Greer, Jeffrey Walter Uhall, Marcel Devon Blackiston, Therese Divron Nelson, Christina McCauley Granados, and Desmond Lamar Sloan. I would note that on August 8th, Sloan was apprehended by the United States Marshal Service in Norfolk, Virginia. He remains in Norfolk, where he awaits extradition back here. We wish to thank the U.S. Marshal's Capital Area Region Fugitive Task Force and Marshal Robert Matheson for the quick apprehension of Sloan. It's now my pleasure to introduce to you Colonel William Plazzi, the Secretary of the Maryland State Police. Sure. Thank you and good morning. Um, Governor Hogan, State's Attorney Fritz, and Sheriff Cameron, um, thank you for the opportunity to participate in this important announcement. The Maryland State Police is proud to have been a part of this collaborative effort in the identification and prosecution of those individuals responsible for the distribution of heroin and carfentanil in St. Mary's County. This is a significant announcement because it exemplifies the cooperative effort that all of us have as we fight the battle in this opioid crisis. Governor Hogan made it clear to me when he came into office um, that we were in the Maryland State Police to focus on the opioid crisis, which is yet another example of we have done that. Maryland State Troopers and investigators respond to every overdose troopers are called to. It is their goal to identify the persons responsible for the distribution of the drugs that led to that individual overdose. State Police investigators looked into the overdose cases earlier this year in St. Mary's County which led to the identification of one of the suspects identified here today. Similar efforts by the Maryland State Police are occurring in every county in this state, each and every day. We are focused on cross-border interjurisdictional crime, which certainly includes the distribution of opioids throughout the state. Our goal is to identify and arrest those responsible 
for importing and distributing these deadly drugs within the state of Maryland. Governor Hogan, I thank you for taking a stand to recognize this important emergency within the state and tasking us with coordinating many of the efforts. I commend Sheriff Cameron and State's Attorney Fritz for their leadership in this effort, especially in this county. More importantly, I commend the dedicated deputies, state troopers, police officers, and federal agents who are on the street, around the clock, working without recognition and often without sleep as we address this challenge of illegal drugs in our communities. I thank those men and women for saving the lives and many times risking their own to do it for us. I thank you for the opportunity again to be here this morning. It's my pleasure to introduce to you the state's attorney for St. Mary's County, the Honorable Richard Fritz. Ladies and gentlemen, St. Mary's County is a small community. A single death from an overdose of drugs ripples throughout our community. You can go to any part of this community today, 7th District, Ridge, Hollywood, California, and every single person knows someone who has either died from an overdose of drugs or knows someone who is extremely addicted to drugs. We've seen this day after day. You know, several years ago, when we saw an overdose of drugs, we said to ourselves, well, this is the tragic consequence of addiction. Today, we have drugs on our street that are so dangerous you know, we've oftentimes thought of heroin. Well, if you look at car fentanyl and if you look at fentanyl, fentanyl is a thousand times more potent than morphine. Car fentanyl is a hundred times more, port, more potent than uh, fentanyl. Several grains of that will kill you dead. What we are finding on our streets is that heroin, Carfentanil, fentanyl are all mixed together. That these drug dealers for $50 are going to drug addicted individuals, giving it to them, they're going back to where they go, they snort it, they think it's heroin, and they die. About a year ago, with the Narcotics Division, State Police, Sheriff's Department, we determined that the drug dealers have to be stopped. The state of Maryland, Governor Hogan has declared a state of emergency. We are right on the brink of declaring that in the entire United States. What we are seeing is that the federal government and the state government is spending millions and millions of dollars on addiction treatment. And what we're seeing is these people go right back out on the street the drug dealers hanging on the corner, sucking them right back into the addiction line. The drug dealers have to pay the consequences. For $50, they do not mind killing our children, our wives, our fathers, our brothers, our sisters. This has got to stop. And the only way it will stop is not by the simple charge of distribution of drugs, but charging them so hard as a consequence of the death of the person that they delivered these drugs to, that they are going to realize that the one thing that they do not want to do is to distribute drugs to someone in St. Mary's County, Maryland. Because if that person dies, they will be prosecuted for homicide, and we will ask for the maximum sentences in addition to the distribution charges that they'll be confronted with. The drugs that we see on our street are horrifying. The only thing you have to do is look at the images of the young people as the crime lab has taken them, lying there in their bed with a needle in their arm. And it will convince every single one of us that we must up the ante against the drug dealer. Now, my office is committed to treatment, 
but by the same time, my office is committed to law enforcement. And we will not tolerate these people walking the street of our society, killing our children and our loved ones. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, these people have been charged with second degree depraved heart murder, which is really a simple consequence. The definition of that is if you undertake an act, knowing farewell that there's a great likelihood that it will kill someone, and indeed it kills someone, then a petty jury, in my opinion, uh, will have no difficulty in finding you guilty. So, this is a new shot across the bow of every single drug dealer in St. Mary's County. And I find that before long, hopefully the state's attorneys throughout the state will follow the suit. I know that on two years running, the State's Attorneys Association uh, has presented legislation to the, to, the, uh, House of, to the House of Delegates in the Senate to track our laws along with the federal law. <clears throat> federal law says if you distribute drugs to someone and they die of a consequence, you could get 30 years to life in prison. Two years in a row, our legislature has turned that down. Governor Hogan has supported that legislation. Our local delegation has supported that legislation. But when it gets up the road, it disappears. I would beseech the state legislature to give us state's attorneys the tools necessary to do our job. Thank you. Thank you, State's Attorney Fritzen. I appreciate and commend you on your leadership and uh, the regarding the pursuit of those that deal death to people here in St. Mary's County and throughout the state. I am honored uh, to introduce our next speaker, and we're honored to be joined by him today, our Governor Larry Hogan. He forcibly recognized and identified the rapidly growing opioid and heroin epidemic three years ago during his campaign. Governor Hogan has made combating this crisis a top priority of his administration. It's my privilege to introduce to you Governor Larry Hogan. Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I want to thank Sheriff Cameron, who, as he mentioned, he served on our heroin uh, and opioid task force. And I want to thank his entire team at the St. Mary's County Sheriff's Department. Uh, along with uh, State's Attorney Rick Fritz and his great team of prosecutors for their efforts. I also want to thank uh, Colonel Bill Palazzi and uh, members of the Maryland State Police for their assistance uh, and uh, really all of those whose efforts have led uh, to the indictments, the eight indictments, including the six new indictments today uh, and announced here. Uh, it is uh, you know, too many Marylanders across our state uh, know the devastation caused by heroin and opioid addiction. And under the surface of almost every community, from one end of the state to the other and from one end of the country to the other, this crisis is destroying lives and tearing apart families and communities. Uh, with, with the introduction of fentanyl, which is much more dangerous and far more deadly than heroin, along with carfentanil, uh, which is a hundred times more deadly than heroin. This problem has exploded nationwide over the past year. In Maryland, uh, we lost more than 2,000 people to overdose deaths in 2016. Um, there were 550 overdose deaths just in the first quarter of this year. And uh, this includes a huge spike 372 people uh, who died of fentanyl-related deaths. Uh, it's the first time ever in the history of the state that the number of deaths, uh, fentanyl-related deaths, actually is higher than the number of heroin deaths. Um, at least six Marylanders <coughs> die each and every day. Uh, last year, 
opioid-related deaths exceeded deaths from both firearms and motor vehicle fatalities combined. Um, for nearly four years since I first started running for governor, um, I've been committed to shining a spotlight on this epidemic and finding real solutions. I, I was somewhat shocked by this. Uh, people weren't talking about this, you know, three and a half, four years ago. The, the, you didn't hear anybody at the federal level, the state level. People in the local communities knew it was going on, but it wasn't the focus that it is now. And as I traveled around the state, I went to every single county, nearly every community, and the first thing I would sit down with local officials and leaders in the community, and I would say, what's the number one problem facing your community? And in every single case, in every single community, from uh, the urban uh, core to wealthy you know, suburbs in Montgomery County to the most rural uh, town, they said heroin and opioids is the number one problem. The very first person to talk to me about this was Sheriff Cameron. I came to St. Mary's County and he talked about this uh, because I was shocked. St. Mary's County has a heroin problem. You know, it just, it's what got me focused on. And we started to pull together experts long before I became governor. And I promised that we were going to try to shine a spotlight on this. And, you know, as soon as I was elected, it was one of the very first things I did was put together the heroin and opioid emergency task force, with, which Sheriff represented law enforcement on. Uh, but we've been committed to trying to find real solutions, and we've been focused on kind of a three-pronged strategy with focused on prevention and treatment and law enforcement and interdiction. Uh, we've trained more people, uh, more individuals under the overdose response program. Uh, we exp expanded Maryland's prescription drug monitoring program. We passed limit guidelines on the dosage and duration of opioid prescriptions. We launched a statewide campaign called Before It's Too Late to raise awareness in the schools and to encourage parents to talk with their kids about the dangers of heroin opioid abuse. We've dedicated more than $470 million uh, toward heroin and opioid substance abuse programs. We doubled the number of treatment beds in Maryland. We enacted uh, legislation to improve patient education continue to increase vital treatment services and to del deliver uh, life-saving naloxone to more at-risk individuals. In March of this year, we became the first state in the nation to declare a real state of emergency in response to the rapid escalation of this crisis. Uh, because we need to treat this crisis the exact same way we would treat any other uh, emergency. You know, the last time we had a state of emergency uh, was the riots in Baltimore, uh, which, uh, you know, was a pretty big deal, but we didn't have a single death during that week. We have 2,000 people dying from this crisis. Uh, it's, um, you know, we a activated an opioid operational command center uh, so that we could more rapidly coordinate between state and local agencies uh, and dedicated an additional $50 million in new funding to provide much needed flexibility to public health and safety professionals. Last month, uh, we announced more than $22 million in funding, 80% of which will go to Maryland's 24 local jurisdictions and service providers. Um, as the uh, crisis evolves, you know, from opioids to heroin to fentanyl to carfentanyl, uh, it continues to get more dangerous and kill more people. And so our response to it has to evolve. And Prevention and treatment, obviously, are two essential components. Uh, but we must also crack down on the criminals who are trafficking these dangerous substances and dealing in death. Uh, last year, we enacted the uh, Justice Reinvestment Act, which included a RICO, RICO statute for Maryland, uh, which we think can help to take down drug dealing criminal gang enterprises. We provided funding to install heroin coordinators in law enforcement agencies in every region of the state. And they're all working hard to ensure that every drug seizure, arrest, and investigation is documented and uploaded into an extensive shared database to give us a clear picture of the paths that these deadly drugs take to get into our communities. Uh, we've committed nearly $12 million in additional funding to the Safe Streets Initiative to reduce crime in local communities. 
Earlier this year, um, our administration in introduced the Distribution of Opioids Resulting in Death Act, which proposed a new felony punishable by up to 30 years uh, for individuals who distribute an opioid or opioid analog, the use of which uh, causes the death of another person. As State's Attorney Fritz pointed out, it didn't pass the legislature, but a weakened version did. The legislature passed a bill that allows prosecutors to seek an additional 10 years for drug dealers who knowingly sell fentanyl and car fentanyl. But we must target these criminals who use death and destruction uh, caused by heroin and opioid addiction for their own financial gain. Uh, we must root out those who are providing this poison to our neighbors, our friends, family members, and loved ones. That's why this morning I'm here to express my full support for the tough actions being taken here in St. Mary's County and the indictments announced today. It is my hope that these actions will serve as an example for prosecutors from one end of the state to the other. Uh, everyone is entitled to due process and everyone is innocent until proven guilty. But I believe that this is the level of tough prosecution that we need in order to turn the tide in this deadly fight. Uh, investing in prevention and treatment can only work if we eliminate the threat posed by drug traffickers all across the state of Maryland. Uh, this is really about getting deadly crime under control so that together uh, we can save thousands of lives here in Maryland. Thank you. Thank you very much. Governor Hogan, we, we appreciate you being here today. We appreciate your support. We appreciate your actions and we appreciate your leadership very much. We have just a few minutes, so we are open to take some questions. Commissioner Hewitt. Uh, Sheriff Cameron, is this done through prescription drugs by doctors or is this something that's done by somebody in a house somewhere cooking some stuff up? Yeah, so more what we're talking about today is not opiate pills. Um, but heroin, illicit heroin, either mixed with fentanyl or car fentanyl or uh, fentanyl, pure fentanyl. It's not a matter of being overprescribed. Yes, this is not a matter of being overprescribed. So that dealer knowingly produces that substance and sells that substance knowing or not knowing what they're selling. The potency of it. The potency of it, or whether it's heroin mixed with fentanyl or heroin mixed with car fentanyl or pure fentanyl or pure car fentanyl. And they know, they do this knowingly, that they're selling a product with knowing that that result is likely going to uh, result in the overdose death of an individual. These folks that were indicted today, what's the maximum exposure that they will be facing? I'll let uh, Mr. Fritz address that. The maximum exposure for second degree homicide is 30 years.